Hello and welcome to Soul GPS. Today I wanted to have an unscripted, off the cuff conversation with you about boundaries and family dynamics. It's a very important topic. It's something I've been talking about over the last two and a half years that I've been uh, making videos. And it's a topic that comes up repetitively in my work with clients. A lot of people are suffering for two reasons. And of course, I'm gonna show you two sort of ends of the spectrum, but there are many shades of gray in between. On one hand, they feel like they can't stand their family. They wanna get away from them. They want to go no contact. They feel this is the best way to go because they have just recently awakened to the truth of tremendous amount of childhood abuse and actually abuse that keeps going to this day. And these are people who are many ages. I worked with people who are as young as 17 um, and this goes all the way to the 50s, sometimes 60s. Although these, these issues tend to change a little bit for the older population because many of those people have already gone no contact earlier in their life and now they're, they're concerned about other things. So. I'll try to address that as well. So the family dynamics are the source of who we are in many ways. You know, they say that what happens to us when we're young is something that continues to trail us for the rest of our life. I just read an incredible passage from um, a book on chronic pain, which is a topic I'll be addressing more on this channel, which is a quote from Freud who basically said, and I'm paraphrasing right now, that life is about making unconscious conscious. And I'm totally sim simplifying right now, but I tend to agree with that in my own journey. And probably you can look at yourself and think about your own journey, where you've come from. You know, there's this, this trend of sort of digging deep and unearthing things from the past and making them conscious. And the amazing thing that happens and here's the link with chronic pain here, is that unless we, when we keep those emotions that come up as a result of conflict in our past that remains unresolved, we tend to suffer. But when we bring it up into the surface, when it breaks through that barrier, so to speak, and suddenly we are aware of it, healing happens. Or it can be the beginning of healing process, it could be the culmination of healing process, or depending on, it depends on everyone and everyone's needs. But that tends to be the case. So, so family dynamics are very important to sort through in order to find peace. Because unless we do that, then there's going to be this constant battle raging inside of our minds. And of course, I'm talking about the domain of thoughts. But thoughts and emotions are tightly linked and intertwined with each other. So of course, if you are in constant conflict internally, you're going to feel it also in your body. And if it reaches a certain boiling point, then it may start to manifest as pain and different um, ailments. Again, this is a topic that's really interesting to me right now. I'm learning a ton about it and I'm going to be I'm bringing it to you in due time. So, so I want to talk about this because this is a topic that I started to talk about when I was two and a, uh, I was gonna say when I was two and a half years old. No, two and a half years ago, when I was going through my big awakening, or maybe it was already three years. Anyway, big awakening after an intensely psychopathic, um, abusive relationship, which made me start this channel. So, what I realized in the process of awakening to the presence of narcissism, psychopathy, and other factors like that in my own life from a variety of sources, and it's really difficult to escape it. I think actually that everyone in this world has had a contact with a narcissist or a psychopath, or is one, um, you know, someone on the spectrum of cluster B. It's just that Usually those encounters are mild enough and short-lived enough that it doesn't cause this all-out breakdown that uh, we go through after we've been really close to the source. So anyways, I was awakening, right? 
and I took a scan of my childhood and all my family members and that resulted in me going uh, low contact with several of my family members and complete no contact with others. And this was the right decision for me to do at that time. Now, I'm talking about myself because I want to illustrate something, but then stay with me because I want to also show you how differently it can play out. Because of course, my example is just one example and there are as many examples as there are people. Every dynamic is a little bit different. They're similar, but they're a little bit different. So. So what happened to me, right, I was, uh, I was on a journey in Slovenia where most of my earlier videos are, are filmed, Slovenia, Croatia, uh, Italy, I was traveling a lot, I needed to get away, I needed to build new neural pathways in my brain to, you know, make that intense experience less relevant and basically start a new life and also I had the need to individuate from my family because I felt like there was a reason why I felt for these people, for this specific person, but it's, this, she wasn't the first one, of course. Um, and I needed to figure that out. And so that awakened a tremendous amount of anger in me and rage because I felt like, you know, I wasn't taught this and there were people who were abusing me on a regular basis. And I abuse people too, you know, I admit I wasn't perfect, um, but I tried to be good. I tried to be perfect. I'm a, total perfectionist, I'm a recovering, <laughs> recovering perfectionist. Um, so all of these things that I was discovering about myself, I was sort of, you know, in some ways pointing finger at people and I needed to do it at that time because I felt like throughout my life I've taken responsibility for way too many things, for way too many issues, for way too many family members. I was always the one to reconcile, I was always the one, maybe not always, but most of the time to apologize and I was just kind of getting sick of it all. I wanted to shed that old identity and really get to the source of who I was. So during that time, my mom and I didn't talk much. You know, I didn't explain to her really uh, what was going on. Sorry about the car noise outside. I didn't explain it to her and so she was really confused and she was suffering. Um, my mom was more of the uh, enmeshing type, you know, she and my father didn't have the best relationship. My dad was often absent, which is also part of the reason why I behaved the way I did in my 20s and 30s, meaning I picked the wrong men. I looked for a father, basically, who I didn't really have, wasn't really in my life as much as he should have been. Um, so I didn't have a healthy role model. So I was looking, I was experimenting, I was curious, you know, and that led me to some places that, um, <laughs> essentially, you know, ended up getting me in trouble, but also woke me up. That's the good part, you know, that unconscious became conscious, but man, that took so much work, that took so much pain, so much suffering, but in the end, now I'm glad I went through it because I know what I know. But going back to that time, you know, I've recorded several videos talking about, you know, the times when I felt really hurt by my mom, and it's true, there were some some moments in time where I felt like she couldn't really help me. Uh, but the way I interpreted it is that she didn't want to, but the truth is that she couldn't. Because there's a certain part in us, deep inside of us, where only we have access. We only have access to that. Um, it's the place where the decision needs to be made, you know, such as, for instance, do I want to succumb to this soul-sucking energy of total victimhood and give in to the pain to the point where I was willing to give up my own life because I didn't want to feel the pain. The pain was old, you know, the pain was, it wasn't just what happened with this man, uh, although it was absolutely terrifying, it was a night from a horror movie, maybe more of a thriller, but there were elements of horror too, again, another story, but, um, but, you know, she couldn't really reach in. Like, I had to make the decision. She she did as much as she could. And I took it as, um, she's not there for me. But the truth is that there was, there was a separation there. There was a divide. There was a chasm that exists between everyone on the planet. That's the space that's very individual, very personal. That's where God resides inside of us. That's where we need to connect spiritually and make that decision. And I remember making that decision. I, I, I made it. I, I made a video about this. 
I made the decision and once I hit the bottom, I just basically pushed myself off on my own without the help of my mom, which was the beginning of my individuation process. So I needed to move away, I needed to pull away because I needed to figure things out in my head. I was extremely confused, I was in total dissonance and I didn't know what was right, what was wrong, what was true, what was lie. So, you know, it took me a long time to sort through it. But what happened was actually quite beautiful because once I made these changes, once I set those boundaries with my family members, I ended the enmeshment there was of course anger, there were issues going on you know, on the other side of the river where I wasn't and I was aware of it but I let it be. That was hard because I didn't like to cause people suffering but I also didn't want to go back and be part of that same dynamic again. So I held my ground and for a period of time I just worked on myself and I honestly didn't know what the outcome was going to be. But in the end, and I don't want to make this video all about me, so I'm just going to speed up a little bit. In the end, this became a very healthy thing for everyone, my whole family, because we all started to set boundaries. I started with the boundaries. I don't, it's not that I was absolutely the first one, like there were no boundaries before, but I really enforced them. I was really strong and tough on that. And then my mom started to set boundaries, and then my sister started to set boundaries, and then I started to observe this and I was kind of like really excited that my own work was rippling across and people were picking it up even though I wasn't talking to them about this. So my own position um, sort of forced the, or the new order to arise and forced the rearrangement. It had to be that way, I mean there's no other way. So there's always resistance, right? If you try to change something in a, in a group dynamic, there's going to be resistance because it means that new energy needs to be expelled. It means that things that used to not be as relevant need to become relevant because we tend to sort of go into this automatic pilot once we establish, you know, a routine and things sort of get set in stone. We just kind of go, um, you know, about life in a sort of half asleep way. And, and some of it is good because we don't want to be expelling energy on things that don't require that. But once you start to change things, what starts to happen is people sort of have to snap out of their own days and think about like what's going on, why is it happening, you know? And people start to shh, shh, talk about it, and and you know, and um, there's there's stuff going on behind people's backs. Triangulation maybe gets a little bit louder, and you know, there's stuff that starts to go on. So I was I was staying away from that, but eventually, my mom and I sat down and had a conversation. And it was a series of conversations. I was wary, so I was treading carefully and I was taking little steps forward. But in the end, we ended up getting closer than ever. But not so much as me being so dependent on her like I used to be. But now I was my own woman. I have individuated. It was painful, it was kind of like my own birth but it was worth it. So and I'm really happy to say that my mom and I have a fantastic relationship. Um, it's different than it used to be, it's better. But going into this, I didn't know the outcome, but I was, and I was prepared for everything. So the reason why I, t why I want wanted to talk about it is because this again comes up a lot in my coaching. This comes up a lot in videos that people make about going no contact with the family members. And I just want to emphasize here, actually my mom even and I talked about this uh, prior to me recording this video, about this idea that in some cases you just have absolutely no choice. The parent is so incredibly abusive, continues to trample on your boundaries, continues to be intrusive, um, destructive, spreads bad rumors about you behind your back, sabotages you. I've heard of of a woman who's being poisoned by her, by her own mother. I mean, it's just, like, things can be, it's so horrible. It's, my heart breaks. I can't imagine, you know, like my, my issues with my mom were pale in comparison with, some, with what some people go through. So sometimes, and you're gonna have to be the judge, you're gonna have to do that. You're gonna have to pull the plug. You're gonna have to just completely cut that cord and say goodbye, maybe even forever. And that's a very difficult thing to do and it requires a period of grieving, 
Um, ideally, you have someone there with you when you're going through it. But if that's something um, that you decided is the right thing for you, trust yourself that that's the right thing for you. But also, don't lose hope if you are someone kind of in the middle and you're not sure. Because you may end up having a better relationship with your parents, siblings, uh, other family members after you go through the period of individuation than what you had before. And do expect, do expect um, rage maybe even, do expect resistance for sure, um, expect those things, this way you won't be surprised and it will be a little bit maybe easier to walk this path because it can be a very lonely path, very uncertain path. And another thing happened also with my sister uh, about whom I talked uh, in my earlier videos, she was my childhood bully and um, you know if, if there's uh, if someone who's watching, if, if you have siblings, an older sibling in particular, you'll understand the dynamic of looking up to your older sibling, right? It's kind of ingrained in us. I think it's genetically ingrained or something, or socially ingrained, I don't know. Some kind of a cellular memory maybe that, you know, when the, the eldest of a family is born, he's got all these special, you know, um, privileges or whatever. So the younger ones, plus they had, you know, a, a jump start in life, so the, when the younger ones come on, the people we relate to the most um, are not the parents, we're attached to them and we need them, but the people we relate to the most and we seek guidance from our older siblings. So I was just, you know, I just adored her. I wanted, I walked behind her, I was like a, this, you know, chicken just walking behind the, mom, oh, the, 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 the goose walking behind mama goose, you know, she was like my mama goose. And everything she did I was impressed by you know to me she was she was a powerful chick you know she was a powerful woman she was somebody who um, you know had um, the men in the neighborhood you know the, the boys in the neighborhood listened to what she had to say she was tough so I looked up to her so when she rejected me uh, for the first time I remember this as clear as today Something that in some level had to happen because again, I needed to also individuate as, uh, as a child. Although it didn't have to be as brutal as my case, of course, but then I was so deeply hurt that for the rest of my life, up till I was in my 30s, before this became conscious, I was looking for her approval in everyone, you know, the, the, and the people, the, the narcissistic men that I've met in my life that was kind of like an extension of that experience that I was looking for them to approve of me not knowing that in my deep subconscious they represented my sister so after three years of no contact which was I think necessary again we do these things for a reason my sister and I did reconcile and uh, it was a great experience it was quite emotional but I'm keeping my boundaries and I know she is too and I respect her, what she's doing, I respect her life. It feels good to have discharged that negative energy and arrived at a, at a better place. But I know myself when I'm with her, what to expect, and I don't push the, the envelope, so to speak. So I just wanted to share that because even a lot of sad stories it can have a positive ending. And I feel like in this case there was a positive ending, but I couldn't have arrived at this place without having done what I did. You know, uh, I needed that time to be on my own. I needed that time to process my rage, my own inner, inner fear and anger for having been treated this way and become my own source of validation. That was the key. I don't need her validation anymore. I don't need my mom's validation. I don't need anyone's validation. This is what's so cool about this work is that you become fiercely emotionally independent and you become a generator of your own happiness and joy, which is actually, it's a bit of a misnomer because we don't have to really generate joy or happiness. I'm discovering it's always there like a sun behind the clouds and it's the clouds that sort of get in the way. And that's normal because our lives as humans are really complicated, you know, really complicated. We are faced with so many challenges. We have a mind, animals don't have it, like a, a self-conscious mind like we do. So in some ways they have an easier time. I guess it depends what animal you are. Um, I don't wanna go too far in that, in that direction because some animals have the worst time ever. 
um, talking about animal cruelty and my heart is breaking right now uh, so I'm just I'm, I'm gonna bow out of that subject but um, you know as humans what we have is we have these conflicts in our mind all the, going on all the time between you know to use the Freudian model the id, the ego and the superego and they're, they're constantly fighting especially the id and the superego which is what we have severely imbalanced if we've been you know uh, abused as children and if we're very highly con conscientious and empathic and you know we lack a strong ego a video about this is, co is coming up this is a very important topic so anyway back to the fam family dynamics I wanted to just give you an ultra version to a story ending right or maybe not ending because the story still goes on we don't know what's gonna happen right things are always shifting it's a very dynamic process families are so complex and they're all like people are always changing right they go through different stages in their life and that affects the rest and so on and so forth but you know so many of you are so sad because you feel like oh my god like I don't want to break away from my mom I love her but I hate her again you can have those two emotions at the same time that that i hate her is likely rage at something that has happened to you in the past that has caused you to feel that way and maybe you do need to pull away because if she stucks her nose in everything you do then that's not acceptable and she's not going to stop unless you tell her to or unless you pull back so you're going to have to decide what's right for you but that doesn't need to mean that you have to end your relationship with your family. I'm also talking here about fathers, I'm talking about brothers and sisters. But again, I do want to emphasize that some of you and some of the horrific stories I've heard about fathers beating their children in the public or, you know, kicking them. And, and you know, um, I mean, I, I, so, many, so many pictures go through my head. I don't want to reveal too many things from my uh, stories of my of my clients but it's it's just so much you know so much pain so much injustice so much rightful rage that you're gonna need to process in order to heal and um, and how do you process this rage you do it with yourself you know you can do it with a therapist you can do it with a coach uh, but most importantly you need to get it out get the, get it on the, on the piece of paper feel it this is very important feel those feelings and suppress them feel them they may feel a bit terrifying and intense, but the catharsis that you'll experience feels wonderful once you get all of that, those emotions out. Because otherwise you, you're spending so much energy keeping everything under, you know, afraid of it. Don't do that because that's going to keep you in that conflict. So you're going to need to look at those things, reconcile those things, re understand that as a human, there's, there are many aspects of your life and your psyche that are sort of happening at the same time, but childhood does need to be processed. Your inner child needs to be heard, you know, needs to be consoled, needs to be loved, needs to be heard, and needs to be tamed ultimately too, because the child can get out of hand easily. So that's a process for you. So I just wanted to um, come today with this message for you and also come um, sort of become transparent in my own journey because I feel like some of these old videos that I've recorded don't f tell the full story this is the full story you know and I want you to have it again it could have been that I never reconciled you know but one of the most beautiful realizations I had with my mom was that after I treated her with a lot of um, coldness uh, at least that's how she perceived it from her side. Uh, for me, it was just distance that I needed to process things. When I came back, there was not even an inkling of um, her putting guilt on me or her being angry or upset. She basically opened her arms and she said, welcome back. And <laughs> I tear up when I think about it, but that's what made me see that there's love there and it's genuine she's not perfect and the forgiveness that came as a result was so nurturing and beautiful and uh, so if you are in a situation again where you're not in the black or white situation where you're somewhere in the middle 
you can have hope that your story can have a happy ending with your family that it doesn't have to be like this forever things are always changing but you do absolutely have to break the patterns not just for yourself primarily for yourself but also for your family you know they talk a lot about um, this the story of the crab right the, the, the sort of family cult the family clan in a bucket and how the the crab if it wants to uh, climb out and escape the bucket will be pulled back down by the others and it's true that's what happens in the stage of resistance but some crabs do get away I, I got away and and I came back and when I came back the dynamic was different and it continues to evolve and I'm so grateful for it so if you have any questions on this please leave them uh, below I understand that this is a rich topic I could probably talk about this for an hour easily um, but leave your questions below leave your comments below again if you're in a situation where it's absolutely hopeless when you're so being so mistreated you've been so abused you have to get away and not look back just seal the door and find um, you know a parent maybe in someone else maybe you'll meet an elder person who's wise and who can be there for you maybe you have an uncle or an aunt or uh, maybe your grandparents uh, one of the grandparents was really there for you so or even and this is gonna be a stretch but seriously like if you can think of somebody in a public domain you know a leader who you really admire who stands for very strong principles you can read up about this person watch their videos um, listen to their uh, their stories read their autobiography if there is one that's gonna help you internalize a strong father figure or mother figure if you're lacking one so there's a way there are ways around it there are ways you can fill yourself with what you were lacking of course if you had a deeply abusive childhood there's there is a vacancy there and only love and god can feel it can fill it for you um and i i wish you all the best and i have faith i always have faith that everything can be resolved i've been through some of the worst experiences and i'm not saying that you haven't been uh, because i don't know your story but i've been in so many hopeless situations where i thought it can't get any worse and things to always get better you know life is such a wave you know whenever I fall into um, sadness or momentary depression which sometimes happens again it's a human thing uh, sometimes we get anxious sometimes we get depressed it's just no big deal it's what happens I always remind myself I tomorrow's a new day and indeed something great can happen and uh, and change everything for the better so I wish that all for you I wanted to come with this positive message for you don't lose hope and again, leave me your comments, leave me your questions. And um, I'm sending everyone the warmest hug I possibly can here from England, UK, and lots of love. And I look forward to connecting with you soon. I want to talk more about chronic pain and how to come out of it. Um, I don't want to say too much, but I'm pretty much pain-free. After 13 months of struggling, I found, I found the recipe. I found the, the way to heal. And the best part is that it's free. I'm going to share that with you and I'm going to talk about more um, um, about the conflict, the inner conflict in our minds that gives rise to painful emotions that can sabotage our health and definitely bring up a lot of anxiety and how to start to resolve that conflict internally. So stay tuned, new videos coming up and again I'm sending you lots of love. Bye!